Hi, I'm Nathan. I go by Pete Parker, and every week I do comic book reviews because that's the rule at my house. If I want to keep buying them, then I have to review them online. So this review is going to be for Ultimate Spider-Man or Ultimate Comic Spider-Man number 160, The Death of Spider-Man. This is the issue that uh, is really big this week, and it came in this plastic poly bag, of course. Uh, and then there's the real awesome cover. And really, this photo image of this cover is not going to do it justice because it, it is an incredible and awesome picture uh, or image that Bagley has done. Uh, I'm a big fan of Bagley art, in case you haven't seen. This is from Ultimate Spider-Man number 6. I got it as soon as it came out at the time, so I've always loved his Spider-Man art, and this is no exception. This is a, a wonderful cover, even if you just get the uh, regular polybagged version. Uh, this is written by, by Brian Michael Bendis and drawn by Mark Bagley, uh, and there's also Landing and Ponser in there, also inker Andy Landing and Andrew Hennessy, and colorist is Justin Ponser, which probably shouldn't be overlooked because it's a pretty epic issue. Um, Let's see, so, where are we at? Uh, in case you didn't know, this is the issue where Spider-Man dies. I knew that going in, we've been knowing that for months now on all these different Ultimate series. They all say Death of Spider-Man at the top. Uh, the other one, Avengers vs. New Ultimates, I complained about because it says the same thing at the top and has absolutely nothing to do with this story specifically. So, it's, it's really annoying that I got looped into that thinking that I'd get some more aspect to this story, and yet it has nothing to do with it at all. Uh, generally, in, in this book, if you don't want to listen, if, if you don't want to hear what happens, I'm going to say what happens right now. So you either skip to the end and uh, get my rating, or go ahead and turn it off and wait until you read it. Uh, basically, uh, Spider-Man took a bullet for Captain America when the Avengers versus the New Ultimates were fighting. Um, and then as soon as he, that happened, there was an explosion, and he got cut off from the rest of the team, and he saw the Sinister Six flying through the air, making their way to his house in Queens. He saw the direction they were going. So he basically followed them to his house. Uh, Iceman and, fought, and uh, Johnny Storm were there. They fought a little bit, and those two guys were knocked out, and then Spider-Man uh, showed up and started kicking butt right away. And then he's managed to take out all of the Sinister Six uh, and was just about to relax with the help of uh, Aunt May, of course. A gun-wielding Aunt May, that was pretty interesting. Um, and is just about to relax and wait for help to arrive when the Green Goblin wakes up and gets up and starts to attack again. So, uh, in this book, you basically have the Green Goblin fighting Spider-Man uh, along with a lot of his uh, family. There he is trying to get uh, Aunt May and Gwen Stacy away from him, away from the Green Goblin, while the Green Goblin attacks. Uh, and then there's a point in here where Aunt May realizes that he's bleeding and that there's trouble. Um, and then uh, Spider-Man gets a few good hits in and tries to wake up Johnny Storm to help him take out the the uh, Green Goblin. Uh, which seems logical, right? There's fire and fire. Johnny Storm's master of fire. You'd think that he'd be able to suck it all up. But instead, he only uh, powers up the goblin, more or less, uh, and makes him uh, look like he has some cosmic energy going on and make him super powerful and makes one of his horns grow back, uh, which kind of sucks for Peter. But Peter still manages to get a lot of good lumps in there, and then... Uh, Right as he was down and about to be taken out finally, uh, Mary Jane drives a truck into uh, the Green Goblin and more or less knocks him out. Uh, and then Spider-Man wakes up and able, is able to sum up the strength to lift up the truck, smash it back down on the Green Goblin, and make it explode to where uh, it blows him back away at the same time as it seemingly... Uh, kills the Green Goblin. Uh, or did it, right? So there he's exhausted, and his friends go to his aid, and they see that he's hurt, and they're waiting for the ambulance or whatever, uh, and he gets this uh, extreme look of happiness on his face that he was finally able to take out all the, uh, the threats to his family's life, uh, and then he apparently dies. 
doesn't really seem like he dies altogether. But, I, you know, they're saying death of Spider-Man this whole time. He's probably really dead. Um, and everybody's upset about that. Except for the Green Goblin, who you can barely tell on the last page, but he kind of smirks a little bit when he's knocked out or whatever. So I guess he's not dead. So there you go. That was the issue. Um... I, as a, obviously, an Ultimate Spider-Man fan that's been collecting this for a long time, uh, really enjoyed the issue, obviously. Uh, I've always liked the Green Goblin in the Ultimate Universe. I thought it was a much better take on the same idea and uh, made more sense for him to be super powerful and crazy at the same time. Uh, these, this fight is epic. The way that it's all mapped out is wonderful. The uh, ability of Spider-Man to continually get up and land these punches and think of new ways to uh, hurt or knock down this guy over and over and over despite him being powered up even more, that's incredible too. Um, so overall, it's, it's really good. And you'll even get some really cool uh, flashback pictures kind of thing. There was a time when the Ultimate Spider-Man comic was drawn by somebody else other than Mark Bagley. Um, so I don't know if the, the specific panel or specific panels like this were drawn by the person who was drawing it before. I don't remember their name because I didn't pick it up at the time. But you can obviously tell that uh, while this is obviously uh, Bagley's Spider-Man, this is either Bagley's rendition of somebody else's Ultimate Spider-Man at the same time, or it's drawn by somebody else, which is really cool. It's cool to see that sometimes he looks like that, and sometimes he looks like this, but it's always him, right? And it's all integrated together. And I saw it multiple times throughout the book and thought that was really cool. Really cool addition in there that they didn't really have to put in. And it was either uh, having the guy who draw it for a while draw, draw a couple panels in here to kind of fill it in, uh, to be a part of it. Or it was uh, Mark Bagley saying, hey, I appreciate the work that you did on this book while I wasn't doing it or while I was doing other things. Uh, so here you go. Uh, as far as story goes, I mean, what, what more could you really want out of this? Um, I've known about the coming death of Spider-Man for, what, six months now? Probably more than that. And it's been advertised all over the place forever. So... It wasn't as shocking as it could have been, I guess. Who knows, right? Because I knew too much about it already. But it, it, it's still a really great book. It's still an epic fight. Uh, it just seems like uh, I'm wanting to say, okay, now what? You know what I mean? Like, I'm already ready for the next person to jump in. Like, almost as soon as Ultimate Spider-Man laid down, Peter Parker laid down, somebody else jumps in and takes over, and they look like Spider-Man, or they do something like Spider-Man again. That would have been incredible, right? But I'm ready for the next part to come, because I knew this has been happening for a long time. There's been a ton of issues in Ultimate Spider-Man about him coming to terms with, you know, his life being okay and everything going well for him or whatever. Uh, but all at the same time, knowing that it came, I still got a little choked up. I mean, I've been with this character for a long time, for 10 years probably, right? Maybe maybe 11 years now. Um, so, you know, I've he, and he's still a kid, right? And he died right in front of his family and all that stuff. is pretty heavy. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm a parent too. That's what happens. So there you go. Uh, even though I knew it was coming, it still got me a little choked up. A little sad to see him finally go, but I'm totally ready for the next thing that comes down the pike. The next way that they twist the Ultimate Universe to be different than the regular universe in the same interesting way. Featuring characters that I like too. So, it did not disappoint. And while I can't... I would have a hard time... See, I, I want to give it a 5 out of 5 because it's so epic and so important or whatever to this specific character. But at the same time, knowing so much about it and kind of uh, having this level of expectation for this book for so long, it doesn't feel like this specific issue was a 5 out of 5. Now, there have been some recently in this series that have been that way. Um... Uh, I'd be more apt to give it a 4 out of 5 if it wasn't so crucial and important and ultimate universe changing uh, to the series. So I don't know. 4.5. How about that? 4.5 out of 5, I guess. 
uh, so I'll have to split the difference on those sites that don't allow mid-range or whatever. But there you go, it's really good. It's not incredibly surprising, but it's probably everything that you want to see in the death of Spider-Man. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number 160, the death of Spider-Man. That's the review. If you want to check out the rest of my reviews, it's under Spidey207 on YouTube or under Pete Parker on uh, the Marvel and DC databases on iFanboy, which is an awesome site too, and Comic Vine. So uh, if you have any questions or comments for me, just leave them. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, as always, I appreciate you uh, watching and listening, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks a lot.